What's up, everybody? Well, the fun never ends with AT&T, does it? Then again, this is the big blue Death Star we're talking about. I shouldn't be surprised. So here's the TP-Link modem. Pretty decent device, it, even though the design looks like an old ex external dial-up modem from the 1990s. Sadly, it doesn't work. Not because the modem itself doesn't work, but because AT&T has the DSL network so locked down that even when I typed in the PPPoE settings and all the configuration settings exactly, it still wouldn't link up. Yeah, you, know, you gotta um, you gotta take note when you receive something like this. Pr please read before proceeding and immediately on page one for AT&T customers <laughs> and uh, stuff like that you know you're in trouble, and AT&T has their network so locked down. Although, from an IT perspective, I can understand why they would do that. I mean, you really, it, it really complicates the support of things when you have, when you allow devices other than authorized devices onto a network, so... Sadly, this thing's gonna have to go back. Although it did turn on, at least. <laughs> it just, AT&T's got the network so locked down that there's no way I can use this thing. However, I also received another surprise package today from the Big Blue Death Star themselves. A DSL installation kit, like what they would send their new customers. So, here I was, I just needed a new modem. They sent me everything, and they sent it UPS today. No wonder this stuff is so expensive. No wonder it costs $75 or whatever it is. I think it's like $60 or $70. Nobody give me a solid price on it either, but it's going to be applied to my next bill from them. But uh, yeah, they sent me a new user installation kit. So I just needed a modem. They sent the works UPS today. Uh, well, I hope I don't get too much of a restocking fee on the TP-Link modem. What do I got here? So, yeah, the blue and orange stuff these folks do. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, welcome, blah, blah, blah. Important information about your new high-speed internet service. I already know how it works. I've had it for years. And a nice, slick, new, I might add, Motorola modem, as opposed to, like, the used pool of equipment that, that cable companies often do, or something like that. Or at least, at least the ratty one around here, so, <laughs> yeah, remembering that horrendous job. So, we got a nice Motorola, still even got the decal on it, so stuff like that, and uh, it's got a nice metal bottom, but I'm not showing you my modem access code and all that other stuff on my brand new modem, so... Alright, so we got this, and we got the works underneath, complete set of filters, cables, the whole nine yards, and uh, what does this one run off of? Motorola AC adapter, what's the output? Oh, 12 volts, half an amp, so same as before. Hopefully this one's uh, AC plug doesn't go, uh, this this one's power plug doesn't go out of tolerance and start frying the modem like this, like what happened to the last one, but uh, yeah, let's look at this thing over here. Nice shiny metal bottom, manufacture date October 2011, and it's smaller than the old modem. Don't know if it runs hotter or not, but let's just uh, hook it all up and see how it all runs, shall we? And here we go, first boot. The um, it's stuck trying to hook up to the DSL. Oh wait, there it goes. But I don't think it's going to log on to the internet because my my con my consumer, my customer information isn't. Oh wait a minute. Hey, cool. It logged right in, and it's an always-on device too. So, uh, and it's an always-on device. So uh, there's no power switch this time. So I don't know if I like that or not. But I have to pull the plug out the back in order for it to work, but I've got the computer directly hooked up to this thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, all right, nice. AT&T high-speed internet installation redirected straight to the high-speed internet thing. Why can't I just re remote into the modem and just install, just type my stuff in? <sighs> let's see what we have here. Oh, look at this snazzy interface. Although I am questioning what I said earlier about proprietary stuff because I forgot I changed the password to my ISP account, so I was still entering in the old password and I was playing with the TP-Link thing. After this finishes, I'm going to give the TP-Link modem one more try and uh, contemplate this situation here as to what I should do uh, regarding... I don't know if AT... if, if I get the TP-Link thing working, I don't know if AT&T will let me send this back or if it'll screw up my... Uh, if it'll screw up my service or something like that, I don't know. We're going to have to see what it is that they want to do here. Or I could do like an upstairs-downstairs network and just have a second modem. <laughs> so, yeah, what am I going to do here, I wonder? Oh, well, let's wait for this to finish first. Great. A program to install as well. 
This better not be as stupid as the last one of these I tried installing, the SBC Yahoo self-support thing that would pop up a big window whenever the, the link went down. Hey, your internet's disconnected. As if I can't look at the modem and see one of the lights turn red. Or, hey, look, I got disconnected from my game. Or, my web browser won't work. Gee, I wonder what that could mean. Is it better not install anything on here that I wouldn't want installed on here? Uh, whatever. Oh, brother, it is. At least this part is. If you need help with your internet connection, look for this icon. Sub wireless or home network. Troubleshoot services or connect you to technical support chat for help. How am I... If the... If the this is the most pointless program. This is what I was saw. This is the AT&T descendant of the SBC program I used to run years ago. And it, what it would do is every time anything at all happened to the connection, it would pop up a window. They'd be like, your internet's not working. No, really? <laughs> Here's the stupid part. It's a computer thing. Oh yeah, I can connect to technical support chat, but if my if my connection goes down, how am I going to connect to technical support chat through the internet? <laughs> Duh. What's this? AT&T browser and toolbar. Quickly access the AT&T homepage with the click of an icon, internet anti-phishing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I already do that stuff on my own. Email customization. Use AT&T webmail when you click on an email link and configure your preferred email cloud. <laughs> no, I don't use the AT&T. Uh, I don't use the AT&T email very much because they're horrendous at running an email service. I get more spam and more problems from my AT&T email than from any other service, including free services that I have as backup accounts in case something happens to my Gmails. <sighs> Whatever. Congratulations, your at and internet's working. Now you can browse the... Uh, sorry, even before this in install finished, it was already up. <laughs> Anywho. Speed test results for the crappy dinosaur subscriber line. It's supposed to be 3 down, 0.38 up. It's 2.6 down, 0.43 up. So, ah, of course, this is the download speed's never at max with this kind of crap. And the, the upload speed's higher, which is good, because that'll help with YouTube uploads. But still... Dinosaur subscriber line. Ugh. Anyways. Okay, just to be a nerd one last time, let's try setting up the TP link one last time with now that I know that my password was wrong for PPPOE and see if it connects up. Nope. Even with the uh, even with the right password typed in, it's still not syncing up. Darn proprietary locked networks. Okay, the TP link's going back. Looks like I'm stuck with the overpriced DSL kit. Oh well. Alright, the TP link has been reset with the factory default settings to wipe out my account information, and I think I'll end up using this snazzy Motorola thing instead. Ah, gotta love it, gotta love it. Let's check the settings one last time. It should be set to bridged mode. And it should take a different administrative password, namely the default password. Yep, bridge mode, back to normal. No, nothing for PPPOA or PPEOE, right? Yep, everything's blank, just like it should be. Set it back to bridge mode. Let's set it back to bridge mode, turn the device off, and it can go back. What a pity, you know, because... It's really, it's really too bad that AT&T has to lock their network so much that you can't use something like this, because this thing actually has some more advanced networking functions in it. It has built-in routing, QoS, and other types of things like that, NAT, and other sorts of things like that, And whereas this is just a regular modem and stuff. But, um, well, this is Motorola, so it's definitely more, uh, I kind of like how it's built a little better than this thing with its... 90s dial-up modem aesthetic and stuff like that. Okay, time to shut this thing down. It's going back. All right, the Motorola is hooked back up, and here's a size comparison between the new Motorola and the old Speedstream. As for this modem, because it still somewhat works and it's got an on-off switch and stuff, I'm going to leave the adapter plug plugged in, keep it around for during power outages and stuff, because this thing draws, it only draws like half an amp tops, and it's a 12-volt device. Because it's a 12-volt device, I can actually use this during power outages with my car starter to access the internet over my netbook. So the next time we have a major storm, I'll use this with a cigarette lighter adapter and a car jump starter to do things during the blackout. And uh, plus, if there's any issues with using a car jump starter and like electrical issues or something like that, this thing will take that instead of this thing. So, all right, time to retire the old dinosaur. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that I'm keeping an eye out for line problems, I'm going to keep an eye on this modem to see if the DSL light ever turns red on me and uh, see if there's any issues. And if there's, Because now, hey, AT&T has no leg left to stand on. Brand new modem. If there's problems with the line, I'll let them show up and then I'll call them and stuff. So I'm going to keep this running uh, on my desk where it is right now the time being to watch for red lights and if I don't get any anymore then I'll move it over to a more permanent location and uh, set it up that way so that's enough of that for now it's enough messing with DSL equipment for now till next time this is Multimedia J signing off thanks for stopping by Be Star